Now, I don't know about you guys, but I might be a tad bit addicted to this game. It's good, man. I still can't believe that this game has stayed under wraps for as long as it was. Now, I'm approaching about 30 hours in this game, and I don't see any signs of slowing down. I have very much enjoyed my time, but I've collected 10 Apex tips that I want to talk about. This game has added close to 10 million players in the past three days, and I see that number only growing into the weekend. So let's go over these tips. First up, boys, ping as much as you possibly can. Now, obviously, you're with a squad. Communication is vitally important for your team. But honestly, guys, the ping system to me is even better than verbally communicating. There's a lot of times that you just need to show your teammates where that enemy is. And there's no better way to show them than just to ping their location. And once you get really fast with it, you'll be pinging and showing your teammates all kinds of stuff without ever having to verbally communicate. So pay attention to your user interface, see what your team is using and wearing. And if you come across a body shield that's better than what they're currently using, ping it up. So get really experienced with using the ping system. All right, moving on to tip number two. This one's gonna be around team synergy, but also around your experience with whatever legend that you're using. So for me, guys, Gibraltar has been my main, but I have no problems playing both Lifeline and Bangalore. And for me, depending on what has been chosen for my team, I'll pick whatever best synergizes. So if I notice that we're missing a support character, I'll go Lifeline. If we're missing a tank, then I'll just play my main Gibraltar so on so forth and when we talk about team synergy there's a lot of different things you can do there i like gibraltar a bunch with a lifeline just simply because i can lay down my tactical shield i can get us that protective dome and as we're inside of that dome we're healing up but when we take a look at more offensive teams, Mirage, Bangalore, and Bloodhound are a nasty combination together. Bangalore throws down the smoke grenade, Bloodhounds can see everything in the smoke, and having Mirage sit in the smoke as well with his decoy, you see where I'm going with this, guys. Even though this is a first-person shooter and a battle royale game, your squad synergy here is extremely important. And a lot of times, especially at the end of the games, it can be the difference between you winning or losing. Moving on to tip number three, weapon choice. Now, I'm gonna give my opinions on these weapons, but really it all comes down to you and how well you can aim. But some weapons do better than others, and a perfect example of that would be something like the Alternator. Now, the Alternator is a great SMG. I love it, it's consistent, but given the amount of damage that it does per body as well as per crits, it's really gonna have to require you to be very accurate, especially when you're dealing with someone that is fully armored out. Whereas something like the Prowler Burst PDW hits 14 damage per bullet, which is 70 damage if you hit all your shots and 21 damage per bullet and 105 if you hit all your shots needless to say the prowler which is like a mid-range smg would be the better option here of course it's a little harder to control considering that it's a five round burst smg but once you can tame it and learn it it is a better all-around smg and that kind of seems to be the case with a lot of different weapons the r301 carbine is a pretty decent assault rifle it's easy to use but i would prefer the Hemlock Burst AR or even the VK47 Flatline. And for my PC users, you can never go wrong with Wingman. Honestly, one of the best guns on PC. So the way the scale has been is the same as it is in a lot of different games. On one side, you have high damage, but also very high skill level. Whereas on the other side, you've got weapons that don't quite hit as hard, but are all around easier weapons to use. Honestly, guys, we can make a whole video talking about weapons as well as their time to kill values, which we probably will, but in another video. For the time being, as a new player, for like the first 10 or 15 games, play with all of the weapons. Try to find as many engagements as you possibly can. Don't just go for the win and just get comfortable with the guns and find whichever ones you like the most. Now, tip number four, pick up your dead teammate's banner. Do not leave that behind. What makes this game so unique compared to other BR games is as soon as a teammate dies, notice that they stay in the lobby. They're rooting for you. They're giving you call outs. They want you to win. And why do they want you to win? They want you to pick up their banner and respawn them. I see people that I don't know if they're just not aware or they just don't care. They walk away from their teammates banner. Now granted, you don't have to sacrifice yourself to get your teammates banner, but it really doesn't hurt to go out of your way. And I can promise you just because your teammate is re-entering the gunfight, 
without weapons or ammo, there's enough loot for them to find to jump right back into action and help you out. Now tip number five, this one gets me every single time. Eliminate your opponents. Now there is a balance here, boys. Don't stop in the middle of the gunfight just to kill that one dude that's laying on the ground. Obviously, if you have a guy in the next room with a peacekeeper and he's primed and ready to take you out, you need to worry about him first, okay? Matter of fact, in that scenario, you may even wanna bait the guy that you've already knocked down. There is a right balance to this though. And a lot of times, I actually hurt myself by not completely killing the opponent off. In Blackout, as well as Fortnite, I don't know. In squads, I had like some strange moral high ground when it came to knocking opponents out and killing them off. I just never felt right thirsting them. In this game, you most definitely want to eliminate that opponent. Because given all the consumables that we have, as soon as that guy is back up, he consumes a Phoenix kit and he is right back in the gunfight with all of his weapons and armor. So again, don't go out of your way to kill that guy. But if he's just kind of limping away from you, don't let him get away. Tip number six, learn to combo abilities. Now, combo and abilities is different for everyone. I play a lot of Gibraltar. There's a lot of times when all hell breaks loose. I mean, every squad is collapsing on you and you should be dead. But that is if you didn't have a Gibraltar on your team. Yeah. This is when you need me in your life. This is that moment when I drop my tack and we get that dome shield around us, but at the same time, I drop my ultimate. Not outside the dome, oh no. I drop that thing inside the dome with us. Why? Because everyone that is trying to rush me right now is about to get popped by artillery. Again, this all ties into how much you play with a certain legend. Some have more obvious combo potential and other ones, you have to really play with the character for extended amounts of time before you finally see it. Which also takes me to my next point. Tip number seven. Some legends have ultimates that can actually harm teammates. Gibraltar, I love them, but at the same time, I've actually killed myself with my own artillery strike as well as my teammates, which is why you do not want to use your ultimate around yourself and your team unless it's just a worst case scenario. Like there's nothing else you can do. And even now, I always tell people whenever I'm about to use my ultimate, even if I have a dome shield up, because if they step out of the dome shield, they're going to get wrecked. And I also believe Bangalore's ultimate can also kill teammates. So be careful, guys, where you place those ultimates. Now, the last section of these tips are really going to revolve around loot. So tip number eight, when you enter certain locations, it'll show the name of the location that you're at on the map. But sometimes it'll say something like high level loot or mid tier loot without giving any kind of indication on the map itself. You really want to pay attention to that though, guys, because if you come across a point on the map that no one has even gone through and it says something like high tier loot, you need to stop and go ahead and loot that place out. Nine times out of 10, it's going to really outfit you and get you ready for even in game just off of looting that one place, which takes me to tip number nine. A quicker, more effective way of getting immediate good loot is to either go to the hot spot there on the map, which normally has like a blue circle around it, which is often a very dangerous place to go because everyone's going to be going there to get the best loot or to land directly on the ship. Now, this ship has a different path every single game, but when you actually make your jump with your squad, you can go directly to that ship and land on it. Now, granted, as soon as you land on that thing, all hell is going to break loose. Everybody's going to be on that ship and everybody's going to be grabbing weapons and killing each other. Now, the bad thing about this ship, at least for PC, is that it's been bugged here lately. If a teammate of yours goes down, like all the way down, like I mean as in eliminated, you can't recover their banner a lot of times. Like a lot of times they'll just be stuck in the air. It's like the game doesn't register that the banner should stay on the ship as it's traveling. So this is only whenever the ship is traveling from wherever it started to its final location. And again, you can always check the map and see where the final location is going to be for that ship. I had a number of situations where I had teammates that died on the ship and got completely eliminated and I wasn't able to recover their banner because they were just stuck up in the middle of the sky. So the ship is the ultimate high risk, high reward scenario. Now tip number 10, loot those care packages. Even if it's a little bit out of your way, there's a good chance that it has one of those gold weapons, which are so deadly. I've only actually gotten to play with two of them. One was the Mastiff shotgun, which was super deadly, pretty much killing any enemy in one shot. And I've also gotten to play with the Crabber. Now the Crabber is a 50 cal sniper and boy is it nasty. Now that sniper has actually been more rare to me than the massive shotgun's been, but you really wanna try to hit up as many of those crates as you can, those drop crates 
crates that come out of the sky as they may contain one of these weapons. And as far as I know, I think these are the only two gold weapons in the game right now. And you can't mod them. They're completely already stocked and they also have a limited amount of ammo. So conserve them for that end game and they will serve you well. So guys, those are my 10 tips. I probably missed a few things here and there, but overall, enjoy yourselves with this game. This is a very fun game. I've had so much fun playing it this week. I'm so glad that they made this game free as well because there's so many people that are picking it up just for that reason alone. Now, I will be collecting data on the rest of these weapons and probably getting time to kill values for all of them. That's a lot, and I probably am going to break it up based on weapon archetypes, so like assault rifles, SMGs, snipers. Hopefully, we'll be getting to that sometimes this weekend, so be looking out for that. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching, and as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right. <laughs>